For the longest time, I found it a challenge to manage my dot files. My original setup was based on this guide provided by Atlassian. And whilst it did work, I found it to be a little too complex for my liking. After about a year of using it, I decided that there had to be a better way, and searched for a new solution. That's where I discovered GNU Sto, which has forever changed the way I manage my dot files for the better. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up for your own dot file configuration, from start to finish. First things first, let's go ahead and create a new directory to store our dot files in. This needs to be inside of your home folder. I'm going to use the dot files directory for mine. The first dot file that I want to manage is my dot zshell rc, which is currently found in my home directory. To do so, I just copy it over using the following command. In order for GNU Sto to work, it's important to lay out the files inside of this directory as if they were inside of our home folder. Therefore, because the zshell rc lives in the top level of my home directory, it needs to live in the top level of my dot files folder as well. Once it's been copied over, the next thing we need to do is remove the original zshell rc from our user's home folder. You can achieve this by deleting the file, but I recommend just renaming it instead. I can check that this has been moved correctly by opening up a new terminal, which informs me that there's no zshell rc. Perfect. With that, we're ready to use GNU Sto, which is where the magic of this setup happens. GNU Sto is self-described as a symlink farm manager, which isn't the most descriptive title. What Sto does is creates symlinks for all of the files and folders inside of the directory you pass to it. It then places these symlinks into the parent directory of where you run it. In the example on screen, you can see all of the symlinks inside of the parent directory are pointing to files and folders inside of the child one. This means by organizing all of our files inside of the dot files directory, Sto will then symlink them into their relevant locations inside of our user's home folder. Let's go ahead and do this on our .zshell rc file. To do so, first install Sto onto your system using your package manager. As I'm using Arch, by the way, I'll install it using Pacman. Once it's installed, it's as simple as running the stow.dot command inside of your dot files directory. Now we can check if this worked. If we look at the C shell RC inside of our home directory, we can see it's a symbolic link to the file in our dot files folder. This is exactly what we want. If I open up a new terminal, then my terminal also works as it did before. Great. Before we make any more changes to our dot files directory, let's first make sure we have version control enabled by turning it into a git repository. This gives us a number of benefits, such as being able to roll back any breaking changes, store this configuration in a remote repository, and easily clone it onto other machines. To do so, you'll first need to make sure you have git installed on your system, which again you can do using your package manager. Once installed, then make sure to run the git init command inside of the dot files directory. Now that our repo is initialized, let's Let's go ahead and add our .zshellrc file in here using the git add command, and then store it using the git commit command. Once that's done, we have version control enabled. However, you may be concerned that our git directory will also be symlinked when we run the sto command next. And you're right to be worried. If we test this out, however, we can see that's not the case. There's no .git directory inside of my home folder. This is because sto has a list of files and directories it will ignore by default, with one of those being the .git directory. If you need to ignore any files or directories that aren't on this list, you can overwrite the default one by adding a local one inside of the directory you're stowing from. To do this, you would create a .sto-local-ignore file containing any files or directories you want sto to ignore. In this example, I have an ignore file that has an entry for the .git directory and an entry for a scripts directory as well. Because the local one overwrites the default one, then you need to make sure you add all of the entries you want Sto to ignore into this file. For me, the default ignore file is all I need for this setup, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this local one. However, your mileage may vary, and if you need Sto to ignore something that isn't covered by the default list, well, now you know how to do that. Now that we have version control enabled, let's make a couple more changes. First of all, it's worth noting that we can make edits to our symlinked files as if they were the original ones. If I open up my zshell rc in a text editor and make a change here, that change will also be reflected in my .files directory. This means I can easily commit or revert these changes. I mentioned before that the file structure inside of our .files directory needs to be the same as if it was in our home folder. Let's take a look at a more advanced example of what that looks like. To show this in action, let's go ahead and add my alacrity configuration, which is stored under my home.config slash alacrity directory. I'll need this directory to be in the same structure in my .files folder. This means I need to create a .config directory and copy the alacrity folder into it. 
Now, when I print out the file structure using tree, you can see it's laid out the exact same way as it is in the home folder. With alacrity added, now's a good time to commit these changes using the following commands. Now we can use stow again to symlink our new files. However, when I use the stow dot command, I get an error. This is because my alacrity configuration already exists where stow is trying to create the symbolic links. There's two ways we can fix this. The first is to just delete or move the existing directory like we did before with our .zshellrc. There is another way however, which is by passing the adopt flag to the stow command as follows. This will tell stow to move any of the conflicting files into the .files directory, allowing it to then create the symbolic links. By doing this however, the files inside of the .files directory will be overwritten with the conflicted ones, so it's a good idea to make sure that you've committed all your changes using git before doing it. For example, the alacrity config here was slightly different to the one in my dot files. Fortunately, because we've managed our code using git, it's easy for me to roll back these unwanted changes. Whilst we're on the subject of git, it's a good idea to have a remote git repo that we can push our dot files to. This prevents us from losing them if anything happens to our computer, and enables us to easily download them anywhere in the world. For this example, I'm going to use GitHub as it's one of the most accessible platforms out there. Although you could use any remote repo that you wanted to, including your own self-hosted one. That's a video for another time, however. To get started, head over to GitHub and click the big green new repo button. Then go ahead and fill out your repository name and any description you want to give it. When using GitHub, you can choose to either use a private or public repo. Typically, you should opt for a private one unless you want to share your dot .files with other people. In either case, make sure you don't have any passwords or secrets inside of your dot .files, otherwise these can accidentally leak. Once the repo is created, go ahead and copy the git URL to your clipboard. Now back in our terminal, we can then use the following command to add our repository as a remote, and then use the git push command to push up the files to it. With that, we have a remote copy of our dot .files, which we can easily pull down to another machine using the git clone command. The final thing I like to do is to add a readme to my dot .files directory. That way, when I move to a new machine, I've got some documentation on how to easily set up my dot .files in case I've forgotten. Typically, I use a markdown for the readme as it displays in GitHub quite nicely. The main points to add to this readme are first, the dependencies you need to install on your system, which is git and stow, and the instructions on how to install the dot .files onto your system. It also wouldn't be a bad idea to link to this YouTube video as well. Stow will also ignore this readme as there's an entry inside of the default ignore file. If you're using your own local ignore file, then make sure to add this entry as well. Once the file has been created, we can then commit these changes and push them up to our remote repo. Now we have some nice documentation for the next time we need to pull these down onto another machine. With that, we have a simple and elegant way of managing dot .files using GNU Stow. I hope this has inspired you to try Stow in your own configurations, or perhaps you have a better way yourself. Let me know either way in the comments down below. Otherwise, a big thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.